Hey everyone, it's Ennis McVeigh of Inside the Ropes here, joined by a former WWE star. He is a one-time NXT Tag Team Champion and was part of the Forgotten Sons and the Knights of the Lone Wolf. It's the man formerly known as Wesley Blake, now Weston Blake. Weston, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on. It's very exciting to be here. Thanks, man. I mean, before we, we dive into you in, in WWE, I wanted to, to ask about your, your last match before joining NXT, which was a six-man involving Jerry Lawler, which I believe was his first match back after he had his, uh, his heart attack. Do you remember much about that match? Did you have any, like, concerns going into it? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that was back in 2012. I was uh, wrestling with uh, Dory Funk at the Funk Conservatory. And uh, at that time, I was very green. And, um, you know, it just, and when I got told the news that I was going to be wrestling Jerry Lawler, a WWE Hall of Famer, a guy that's a legend in the business, a guy that's just been, uh, you know, with WWE and, uh, and all the stuff he did in Memphis, uh, you know, just an absolute legend. Uh, the stuff we did with Andy Kaufman, the really propelled um, wrestling and stuff like that was just, you know, to be around a true legend of the business, it was uh, something that was kind of frightening, uh, but also very much, you know, uh, excited to get to work with and kind of get to learn from. And I remember I, I was super nervous uh, going into that day, uh, just thinking like, oh, what am I going to do? And just having like this uh, empty stomach kind of pit feeling going into that day. And when I got there and he showed up to the arena, and uh, he started talking to me. I mean, like I was, I was sweating bullets. You know, hands were clammy, type, that type of stuff. Like getting ready for this match. But once he got into the locker room and he started talking to me and started talking to the other people in the locker room, it was just very calming and very. It's like his confidence just kind of oozed out. You know, he had a sense of uh, of ease about him that just you know, that kind of radiated off towards. Uh, me and the other performers as well. I mean, he sat there in the locker room, talked to us, told us stories and, you know, kind of what his thoughts of the business and what, you know, and kind of his life and how he got into the business and how the business has helped him so much. And I mean, by the time that I was ready to go out to the ring and, and wrestle him, I, I felt like I, I could have, I wrestled him five, six years. That's how calm he made me and just made me elevate my game. Uh, uh, in the ring and not only in the ring but outside the ring because I remember uh, after having that match with him I can say he was just so nice and so well putting it together uh, I that's when it clicked to me I'm like okay I was in a ring with the WWE Hall of Famer maybe I can do this I can pers you know, pursue this and keep going uh, and getting better and better and better and when um, that night when I was driving home I just remembered that's that's what I want to do, and that's what I want to be uh, down the road or, or in WWE or NXT or anywhere I go. Um, I just want uh, when people wrestle me or that there's a sense of confidence and there's a sense of calming. Uh, and when I, if I wrestle someone for the very first time or if I've wrestled someone that's 10 years in or 20 years in, uh, just to have that confidence and just kind of have that cool and calm collect type of uh, manner in which that in which it can help people along the way so from there you you went on to join nxt and you, your first big push on tv was was obviously you and murphy teaming together how did you two getting together as a team come about whose idea was it uh murphy and i we uh we sparked our friendship out of trout we had in 2012 uh with uh, in, uh down in fcw uh, in tampa and we reported our first day in NXT on uh, July 8th of 2013 when the Performance Center opened. And we just uh, sparked a kind of a friendship. You know, I mean, he was probably from Australia. He's over in a different country. And he was just trying to make friends. And, you know, we, we hit it off. We had the same kind of passion and drive, uh, shared the same kind of interest. So you know, that was the thing. We kind of started uh, hitting the road together, uh, driving uh, to towns and stuff like that. And it was probably, probably about seven or eight months later, I would say I was walking into work one day and Matt Broom, who was a commentator at that time in the NXT, and he was also doing some coaching there at the, the Performance Center. He's the one that pulled me off to the side 
and uh, told me, he said, hey, I think you and Murphy should, uh, should, should try tagging. And once, uh, you know, and which I was like thrilled, I was like, yeah, if I, you know, if he's, if he wants to do it, then I, I'm all game. And that night I went to a promo class with uh, Dusty Rhodes, the American dream. And after I cut my promo, he told me come back tomorrow uh, and cut a promo with Buddy Murphy uh, with no real storyline or nothing. He's like, I just want to see you two in front of a camera. And so that's what we did the, the very next day. We went and cut a promo. And then that weekend we went on and uh, started doing live events together. And uh, yeah, you know, when we first started doing live events, we didn't have matching gear, of course, you know, so um but we knew right away we wanted to make this work. And so I, I had to borrow, uh, he had white shorts at the time with the white kick pads. And so I went and I had to borrow someone's white boots and I borrowed someone's white trunks uh, just so we can kind of have that cohesiveness when we got out to the ring, like people know like, okay, these guys are kind of a team. And after that first match that we had together, we had just had a chemistry about it ourselves that we're like, man, I think we have something here. And so we went ahead and started investing in ourselves and buying gear and really uh, started diving into our tag team and our tag team uh, dimensions and stuff like that. And so I would say it was probably Matt Bloom or uh, Dusty Rhodes or the NXT creative that kind of helped put me and, and Murphy together. And then I think once me and Murphy were together, we, uh, we thrived on each other and you know share each other's passions on trying to be the best tag team that we could be. You mentioned Dusty there, and a lot of NXT talent who came through at that time talked a lot about how Dusty helped them develop so much at that time. How influential was Dusty on you when you were at the Performance Center? Uh, I mean, he was an absolute uh, professional and just what uh, an aura about him. And, man, he he just brought, um, you know, uh, star power, and he just brought, like, this – um uh, this kind of certainty where he you know that like man if if i can make entertain him then i know that i can entertain the masses and he uh he helped me out in so much i'm, I'm in forever in debt to the Rhodes family just because of what dusty did he instilled confidence in me when i first got there to nxt uh cutting promos and stuff like that wasn't my strongest forte uh in my opinion it was the stuff that i really had to work on I really had to find confidence in what I was saying and what I was trying to do. But man, after about a month of being there with him and uh, just a, a short month of being there with him, he instilled that confidence in me uh, of uh, storytelling through a promo and, you know, getting layers of character and stuff like that. End up promo is sometimes it's not what you say, but how you say it and just how he constructed that. And it was just, really mesmerizing uh, just to watch him work, not only with me, but with other, other NXT talent at that time coming in uh, with cutting promos and, and storytelling as well. I mean, and he, he did wonders for NXT at that time because I remember some promo classes, we wouldn't cut a promo. He would just show you how TV is written out. Say, like, hey, here's an hour of TV. I'm going to show you how um, these segments are broken up. And so it was just, you know, you're just under a great, learning tree of just like how the business worked and how you know how they did it from a business side and how they did from a creative side he brought all those elements so when you were cutting a promo or you were doing a match on tv you had these uh weapons or you know these kind of skill sets that you were always thinking about to kind of help uh, elevate your game so you and Murphy obviously went on to become nxt tag team champions and you you held the belts all the way until takeover brooklyn won with that being the first takeover to take place outside of Full Sail, did that feel like a like a turning point for NXT for it becoming more than just a developmental brand? Very much so. Very much so. Uh, that was uh, that's one of my favorite matches in my mind, and, and and I think that was a huge turning point for NXT uh, as a whole, um, just a, a, as a. a brand level and also as a you know as a commodity for a, a wwe because uh, at that time you know like you said nxts were, were just done strictly full sale and i want to say it was the wrestlemania in san francisco where we actually had a live event um uh, you know in san francisco where it wasn't um taped or anything like that but that was the first one where we actually drew 
some really good numbers. I want to say we drew like between five, six, six thousand uh, fans. Of course, we're piggybacking off the WrestleMania weekend, but I think that started getting the wheels turning uh, with creative, like, hey, I think this could be something big. And I think we kept riding the momentum. And Brooklyn One was just, you know, as uh, performers, and once you get to NXT, uh, I know before the performers, I mean, the first time they were in front of a crowd like that is when they kind of got to the main roster and they kind of got to Raw and SmackDown. And so I think that helped out uh, performance-wise us because it, it made us more comfortable in front of a, a larger crowd and, you know, with the lights and camera, and, you know, the 15, 20,000 people uh, yelling, screaming or booing or whatever they were doing. And it, it was just very uh, monumental for NXT and for my career. You and Murphy a year after that ended up getting broken up, and really the only fallout from that was a was a singles match between the two of you that ended in a, a no contest. What was both of your reactions to to the news that you were being broken up, and was there any other pitches about how you guys would break up on TV? So uh, when we first got told that we were kind of breaking up, we thought that they were just going to break up Alexa from Murphy and myself. So uh, so we kind of knew that Alexa was going to break off from us and she was going to go have her singles run and stuff like that, which we were both very happy for and very proud of her for everything that she's accomplished and done. And so, uh, and then we were kind of just left there. We, um, we, we were tagging here and there. And then eventually on TV, they started, all right, Murphy, you're wrestling uh, so-and-so. Blake, you're going to wrestle so-and-so in singles. And at that time, Murphy and myself were like, wait, are y'all splitting us up? And they're just kind of like, yes and no. We kept getting that kind of answer. Uh, but eventually Murphy and myself, we were just like, you know, let's just pitch uh, for us to wrestle each other. And so we did, we pitched uh, us to wrestle each other like a best set of three or best set of five series type matches. Uh, but they didn't want to pull the trigger on that because they just said like, hey, we want y'all to have separate entities and we just didn't want one partner to be above the other uh, is what we had told. So he's like, we're just going to kind of separate y'all and y'all kind of go about your own path. And so we had that one match, which, uh, like you said, ended in a no DQ with Samoa Joe coming out. Uh, but then after that, once that happened, we uh, started getting the wheels rolling on our single stuff, in which I started doing the beautiful Blake. And he went and um, got, uh, he's always been in tremendous shape, but he went and, uh, got himself in even better shape and went down to 205 Live. And he, uh, of course, did very well there and for that brand. After that, you you went on to to form the Forgotten Sons with Cutler and Riker. And I believe in the first couple of house shows, Lacey Evans was also a part of that group. Where did the, the idea of her being in the Forgotten Sons come from? Uh, I think that was a pitch uh, from Creative. Um, I think they just wanted to see how it would look. And because at that time, of course, Sanity was there. And so I think they were just trying to say, like, oh, this would be a perfect matchup to have uh, the Forgotten Sons. And, with you know, with Lacey against Sanity, with uh, Nikki Cross and, and Wolf and, and Damo and stuff like that. And so uh, it, it was just a pitch on a live event to kind of see if they liked the look and stuff like that. But I think they had other plans for Lacey Evans at that time. So. Uh, that just kind of got put on the back burner. Um, but yeah, with Steve and myself, with the Forgotten Sons, it was very uh, it was a very cool moment in our career just because me and him, uh, ever since we got to NXT, we had had a brotherhood. We bonded really well. And um, it wasn't long after where we started riding the car rides together and stuff like that and really formed um, like a real kinship with each other. And so it, it was just nice for the Forgotten Sons because that was something that Steve and myself, we pitched us like as a tag coming in together. And it, it, it was nice because they actually went with it and they went with, you know, our kind of ideas. And of course, they put their little spin on it with some stuff. Um, like I said, we were kind of going Sons of Anarchy vibe uh, when we first started out. And uh, it wasn't until several months later when... Um, creative i want to say it was probably steve carino who kind of uh got the gears turning with creative of uh, putting Riker with us and once Riker was with us that's when the ball started rolling uh for the forgotten sons once you and Riker and all that got together eventually you, you end up leaving nxt the end of last year with the the the, the brand developing from being development on a fully fledged brand how did the sort of the atmosphere 
um, and people's attitudes sort of change in NXT from when you arrived to sort of when you left? So, yeah, when you first arrived in um, NXT in 2013, it was, uh, you know, a, a very much, like you said, a developmental brand where you and people were trying to build characters and we were trying to um, get fresh faces out there in front of, you know, a crowd and kind of, you know, and the goal of NXT was to get you up to the main roster, however they saw fit, you know, and, uh, when you were deemed ready. And so... And through the years, uh, when it's just, it just started becoming a brand and started really started taking off, it, it, you know, it, they always had that developmental part because, of course, they're always bringing in stars uh, and, you know, they're always bringing in athletes from different um, uh, athletics and ventures and stuff like that. You know, so they're always had that low developmental part. But then they started bringing in uh, big time talents from the independent circuit. Uh, you, you know, of course, you have people like uh, Kevin Owens and, and Finn Balor and Shinsuke and Samoa Joe, where he had these kind of bigger names coming from other companies, which really elevated the brand of NXT. And uh, that's when NXT started taking on a, a sort of life of its own. And it was very interesting and very fun to be a part of. And now, I mean, now it, uh, NXT is just a, a full on brand uh that's on USA Network now. So, I mean, they are, are right up there with Raw and SmackDown. So it's one of those things where uh, when I first started, you know, we were filming out a full cell, um, you know, every two to three months. And now you have a weekly TV show shooting live two hours uh, every week. I mean, that just shows you the transformation. It just shows you the, you know, how much we uh, evolved with NXT and how, everything has grown and so big. How was it debuting on the main roster just as the, the pandemic started? Was it intimidating coming in with the, you know, the uncertainty of fans not being there, shows being in the performance center and all that? Uh, not so much intimidating. Uh, it, it's one of those uh, things that you really have to have confidence in yourself when you start wrestling in front of no fans. Uh, just because when you wrestle in front of fans, you kind of get a reaction whether it's something's working or not and whether the match is going good or whether the match is going bad. And so when you kind of lose that uh, part of your performance, that's when you really have to have your confidence. And you really have to rely on not only yourself, but your tag partner and the people that you're in the ring with as well. And I uh, was very fortunate enough with uh, Steve and myself that we had uh, some incredible people to work with uh, once we got up there with like the Lucha Dragons, Miz and Morrison, and of course, the New Day, who have been up there for quite some time, and they were kind of uh, the veterans of, you know, of what, you know, and their confidence levels, you know, was to raise ours up as well. Uh, just when we start putting matches together and certain, you know, and once you're with those certain types of people, it, it helps elevate you and, in that situation. One more question before I, I let you go. Obviously, you're now uh, been released in WWE, and you're you you've got your 90 day no compete clause. Is there anyone in particular on your bucket list that you, you want to face, or any particular places you want to compete in? Um, man, th th there's there's so much talent out there right now, and that's that's the one thing that I'm, I'm very happy and grateful for is that there's just so much talent out there that I, I can't wait to wrestle uh, singles and tag. Um, you know, and, and the opportunities from uh, me coming up with all these different things that, that could happen. Like I, 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 you look at any type of roster out there now with a AEW, uh, you got Impact, Ring of Honor, you got MLW, you got uh, New Japan, you got NOAA. I mean, there is just a long list of people that, you know, I, I would love to work for all those places at any time because I believe they're, their talent and their rosters are just filled to the brim with, with people that I would love to get in the ring with. And I would just love to be in front of different crowds and different styles just to help myself elevate uh, my game. And hopefully I can bring a certain uh, uh, worth and quality to the company that I, I go to. Where can people find you if they, if they want to book you? Are you on social media? Is it by email? Yep. Uh, social media, you, you go, go to Twitter or Instagram at the Weston Blake. Um, and you can also go, uh, you can book me for business inquiries at book Weston Blake 
uh, at gmail.com, which you can also find my bio uh, on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks very much, man, and good luck in the future. Thank you so much.